In this video, you will learn how to simulate a single stage U bending process considering workpiece hardening using isothermal analysis module of FDEX 2D, the intelligent metal forming simulator. Let's get started with the process type first. Since the deformation of the workpiece is insignificant in the third dimension when compared to the planar deformation, we will carry out a 2D plane strain simulation. The temperature change is neglected in the simulation. The information about the material is given on the left side. The dimensions of the workpiece are as shown in the figure on the left. The material of the workpiece is a stainless steel grade and its initial temperature is equal to that of room temperature. Anti-corrosive oil-based lubricant is used as a lubricant in this forging process. Therefore a corresponding friction formulation will be selected. A constant velocity condition will be used in the simulation because the material is rate independent. The spring back phenomenon will also be simulated in this tutorial. The problem definition is complete. The result of the simulation would be a U-shaped sheet as can be seen on the right side. The final shape of the sheet after spring back can also be seen here. So now, let's see how we can simulate this process using FDEX. Double click on FDEX icon to execute FDEX in your computer. Click on new to define a new process. In this process information window we will clearly define the process type. This is 2D plane strain based cold forging process. So we will make the selections accordingly. Select plate forging under the forming process type on the left side. Select cold forming and 2D plane strain simulation. We select Newton as the unit of force. So the unit of stress will be megapascal. This will be a flow analysis which means only the mechanical effects of deformation of the workpiece will be considered in the simulation. Select elastoplastic deformation type. This means the elastic component of deformation is not neglected in the simulation and it is considered in addition to the plastic deformation. Since this process does not have any flash, select regular type under flash. Click OK. This is the main window of FDEX. We will use the toolbar to set up the simulation step by step. First step is to import the geometry. Click on model, from file and then select the geometry file in DXF format. Click open. This opens a new window, displaying the geometry file. Click OK. In the prompt window that opens, click yes to make the overall process automatic. Note that you can get this geometry file inside your FDEX installation folder. Let's move on to the second step which is to define the material property. Click on material, from library and then select stainless steel. Under the stainless steel grades available, select DP780 and then click load. This will load the material into the simulation. Now click close. The third step is to define the press machine type. As you know, we will use a constant velocity condition. For using that, click on press, manual, enter minus 1 in the fifth column of the table. This means, making the press move downwards, in the negative y direction, with a constant velocity of 1 mm per second. Click OK. The fourth step is to select the friction formulation. Click on friction, from library and then select oil underscore cold, steel, click load. Also select the friction formulation titled ideal, click load, and then close. Now is the time to define the blank holder force. Click on die type, manual and make sure that with spring is selected in the drop down list. Enter the following. Spring constant equals 0.1. Preload equals 49. Stroke equals 0.2. Click OK. The properties that were loaded so far will be assigned to the respective entities now. Right click on the stainless steel grade and select to work pieces. This will assign the material grade to the work piece. Right click on V equals 0, minus 1 comma 0, and select to upper dies. Right click on oil underscore cold, steel, and then select to upper and lower dies. Select ideal, drag it and drop it on upper die 2 and lower die. Select K equals 0.1, drag it and drop it on upper die 2. Now we have completed the definition and assignment of properties to the dies and the workpiece. The next step is to position the dies properly. 
For this, we will use the Positioner tool of Avdex. Double click on Stage 1 and click on Positioner icon on this toolbar. Click Auto icon. This will enable automatic positioning of the dies. Click OK. Before we move on to the stroke definition, we will use the Auto Grid function to refine the mesh generation. To do this, double click on the geometry file titled Circular Cylinder below Workpiece. Click on Auto Grid. This opens a new window. Now select User Defined and then enter the following values. Under the flow lines. Next to Horizontal enter 24. Next to Vertical enter 2776. And below Regular Grids. Enter 695 next to Horizontal. And enter 7 next to Vertical. Click OK. If you remember, we had selected elastoplastic deformation at the beginning of this tutorial. So we will have to define an option for the dye contact treatment in this analysis. For doing this, double click on process control. In the process control window that opens, click on I default. Scroll down to I default 32 and enter a value of 1 next to I default 32. This will enable the option for the dye contact treatment in the case of an elastoplastic analysis. We will also disable the automatic remeshing in this example. So click on remeshing and then select none from the drop down list and click OK. The next step is to define the properties such as stroke and the number of solution steps. Double click on forming one. This will open the forming control window of stage one. Select distance from the drop down menu next to stop criterion and enter a value of 19.7. Then click on the three dots next to this distance value. Select the two nodes as can be seen in the screen. One point on the upper die and other on the lower die. The order of selection does not matter. This is the stop criterion for this stage, meaning that, when the distance between the upper and lower die reaches this value, the solver will automatically move on to the next stage. After doing this, click on Output Divisions. We will increase the number of solution steps used in the simulation. Select user defined below number of solution steps. Enter a value of 300. Now click on reset and enter a value of 0.08 in the field below effective strain. Click on spring back and select spring back analysis from the drop down list and enter the following values. Multiple of steps equals 2. Number of solution steps equals 10. Click OK. We are almost done with the simulation setup process. We just have to save the simulation, check, and run it. Click on the save icon, enter a file name. And then click save. Your simulation file is now saved. The final step is to check the simulation to see if we have set it up correctly. Click on the tick mark button on the toolbar. In the window that opens, click check. This will let you know the error messages if there are any. The notice messages can be ignored at this step. After making sure that there are no error messages, click Run. This area shows stage-wise and overall progress of the simulation. On the right side are the different state variables that can be visualized based on the simulation. You can explore more on this section to investigate the state variables of your interest. The media tools here allow you to visualize the deformation behavior of the process.